Hey there my wedding planning friends and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, thanks so much for clicking on my video. I'm Emily Summer, I'm a wedding planner based in Montana and I make weekly videos on wedding planning tips and advice. So today's topic is a fun one and we're going to talk all about wedding desserts. So if you don't want a wedding cake, what your options are outside of that, how to have a fully styled uh, wedding dessert table and everything in between. So something that I've noticed lately is a lot of couples are opting out of a traditional wedding cake and having just cake as their option for desserts. And there's a lot of questions that come about when trying to plan this out, such as, do I still need a cake for cake cutting? Do I need to serve the same thing that I'm cutting for my cake? Can I have a variety of desserts and have no cake at all. And there's really just so many options when it comes to wedding desserts. And especially these days, your options are really limitless. And the tradition of a wedding cake and cutting the cake is totally just a personal preference and up to you whether you want to have that tradition or not. So while cake is a great option for desserts, it is not the only option. And I'm sure if you have been to a wedding lately, you've probably seen the idea of a dessert table rather than just a wedding cake. And what this means is basically just having a variety of dessert options available for guests and not just the traditional wedding cake where that gets um, cut and served and that is the only dessert that is served at the wedding. If you're somebody that doesn't love cake or you want to be able to have a little bit more variety or say you guys love cheesecake and that's what you get every time you go out to eat and that's your dessert choice and that's what you want to have at your wedding, I think that's great and the more ways that you can personalize and kind of customize your wedding, the better. So here's some tips if you want to go more of the wedding dessert table route. So typically, if you're gonna have a wedding dessert table with just a variety of desserts, you can do this one of two ways. You can either have a very, very small individual dessert or wedding cake that you will um, have for the two of you. Like you essentially think of it as like your cake topper at a traditional wedding is the only cake that you would have because that's something that you would cut and serve and take home with you. Typically the tradition is to take the top tier of a cake home with you, freeze it and, and eat it on your first wedding anniversary. That being said, there's a lot of conversation out there about whether this is um, proper etiquette or not to have a small individual cake that you can cut and have a, a cake cutting ceremony with but not actually serve it with your guests. So tradition and etiquette says that you should serve whatever, serve to your guests whatever you're serving yourself essentially. So if you're cutting your cake, you don't want to just cut that cake and then it, it goes away and there's, there's no option for cake for your guests. So basically what this means is it's not proper etiquette to cut and serve a wedding cake if you have no intention of serving any cake to the rest of your guests. Um, I've seen it equated to like if you're going to a birthday party and the kid cuts his cake and then the cake is taken away and something else is brought out. It's just kind of weird if you think about it in that sense. So that being said, I have seen this done a lot and like I said if you have just a very like miniature cake just so that it's it's like obviously just for the two of you and it's something that you're going to take home and freeze and have on your first wedding anniversary. I have never seen an issue with it. I haven't seen guests get upset that there is no cake served to them in this scenario. So a couple options. If you want to go that route but you're a little concerned about what your guests might think or if they're wanting cake, what you can do is have a beautiful stylized small cake for you guys to cut and have the same type of cake in sheet cake in the back. So that is what you would cut and serve for your guests, not the actual physical cake that's on the table. That's the nice one. So that's an option to have kind of an, uh, a cake option for guests, but not actually have to go in and cut your beautiful stylized cake, especially if you don't have a professional baker or somebody there to cut for you. Um, that way you're still serving essentially the same thing that you're cutting, um, but you don't have to, again, go through that whole process. Another option is to just forego cake altogether if that's not your thing. If you guys don't love cake, you don't need to serve it and that's totally fine. And if you're going to build a wedding dessert table, then you just want to make sure that you have some varieties for guests. So kind of a good rule of thumb is you don't want to have too much variety so as to make it difficult for your guests to choose what to eat or they're going to load up their plates and then waste half of it and then you're, and you're left with you know tons of leftover desserts at the end of the night. Um, a good rule of thumb is to have about five options, three to five options I'd say are pretty good at most weddings. Um, some pretty standard ones are like 
small brownie bites, um, lemon squares, and some kind of like truffle. Obviously there's plenty of more options than just that. And cupcakes are also a great option as well. Um, so it really just depends on, you know, your personal taste, what you know your guests like, and what you want to have as dessert at your wedding. So three to five options is plenty. No more than five options is necessary. And then you have some freedom with what you want to actually have here. Now, if you're wanting to kind of cover all of your bases, a good thing to keep in mind is to have an option that is chocolate, an option that is like fruity or lighter, like a lemon square or some kind of um, cupcake with a, a lemon or a, a fruit filling or something like that, some sort of like fruity option and something that is more spice. So like um, a ginger or carrot cake cupcakes or something like that. You also want to make sure that these are small individual bite sized portions. This way it's not only easy for guests to just grab and go and have their selection of desserts, but it also gives them the option to have more and have more variety. So if you have one dessert option that is like a big full size brownie or something like that and there's other options that they want to try, they may not opt for that large piece because they want to be able to have a few different options and don't want to fill up on just the one uh, dessert variety type. So keep them small, keep them bite-sized, this way it'll be a lot easier to not only serve your guests, but your desserts will go a lot further that way as well. It's also a good idea to consider gluten-free options and have at least one variety of dessert that will be gluten-free for those guests that need it. Now when it comes to the amount of desserts that you need, it tends to be a lot easier to calculate this out with the cake because you can kind of anticipate how many slices per guest. So with dessert varieties, you've got to be a little bit more creative and think through your dessert options a little bit more. But a good place to start is to estimate about three pieces per guest per variety type. Again, this might vary based on your crowd and your own personal preference, so just keep that into consideration. Now when it comes to the setting up of your dessert table, there's a few things to keep in mind here as well. First of all, if you plan on having dessert varieties and a dessert table, you need to make sure that you have somebody in charge of setting this up. So are your uh, bakers coming and delivering the dessert varieties? Is that something you have to pick up and set up yourself? With various dessert options, there's going to be a lot more involved in the setup of a dessert table because you will need to make sure that you have plenty of platters, dishes, cake stands, whatever that you're going to need to display the desserts on and to serve them on. So first things first, check with whoever is supplying your desserts, whether they have cake stands or platters or whatever that you can rent from them or that they will be served or delivered on so that you know that ahead of time if in case you need to order or rent some other items in order to use on your dessert table. If you do need to go a third party route and either purchase or rent other cake stands, platters, what have you, make sure that they are on site early enough that if your bakers are delivering, everything is set up already and all they have to do is set out the desserts onto the already set up table. You also want to communicate with them whether they will provide labels for the dessert types or if that's something that you need to have. It's always a good idea to have your desserts labeled, even if you think that it's self-explanatory, just so that if people have food allergies or anything like that, they also just like to know what they're eating. So have some sort of plan for labeling what each dessert variety is, whether that is directly from the person that is catering the desserts or something that you provide. So the overall style, when you're setting up a dessert table, some tips to make it look the best it possibly can is to have light levels. So you wanna have different varying heights on the table, so some flat platters that will just sit right on top of the table, as well as some shorter cake stands and maybe something taller so that you have various levels. Having different levels is very attractive to the eye and it'll look a lot nicer in photos as well. Um, keep in mind, the dessert table will likely be heavily photographed and if you plan on having a small cake that you're going to cut, you're obviously going to get pictures taken during that moment. So you want to make sure everything looks really nice on the table and something that you will like to see in pictures. Um, florals go a long way on your dessert table as well. Something that I do a lot is if you have flowers at your ceremony that are in loose faces, things that are going down the aisle or around your arbor or whatever it may be that are in individual vases or even a piece from your arch that can be repurposed at the dessert table, this is a great place to repurpose flowers. So you can either bring vases in from the ceremony and put them at the base of the table or put them on the table. There's a lot of variety here and wherever you can repurpose, it's obviously gonna save you money. But incorporating some sort of florals is always a good idea to help elevate the look of your dessert table. I also recommend having your dessert table, no matter what you're serving, indoors if possible, especially if you're having a summer wedding where there's a lot of bugs involved. 
Bugs love sugar, so if you're able to keep it indoors, that will really help having to uh, monitor that table, make sure flies aren't getting on there, make sure um, things aren't melting in the sun, and all of that to really maintain the integrity of your desserts. Keep it indoors if you can. You also want the table to be in an easy to access location. So if you are thinking about a lot of guests going over to the table and potentially a line being created in order to get the desserts that they want, you wanna make sure it's in a space that isn't going to be right next to guest tables or in a, in a space where a line can't be formed or things will be really cramped. So keep it in an easy to access location with a lot of extra space around it. Let's talk about tastings for a second. So say that you've got some ideas in mind for what you wanna have for your dessert table, you've got a few various options in mind and potentially you're having a cake as well, you can go to multiple cake tastings. So you can try multiple desserts if you want to do that and I think this is a pretty big incentive for having multiple uh, dessert options and a variety of, of desserts for a, a dessert table as opposed to just a cake as you can try all the things that you want to have. And it's okay to go to a couple different places and try different cakes. Um, that being said, some places will potentially charge you for tastings if you haven't officially booked them yet. And a lot of times if they do charge for a tasting, that fee is taken off of your overall um, catering bill when you place an order with them. Another little tip, if you are serving cake, no matter the size, make sure that you have a cake knife and spatula. So if you plan on having the whole cake cutting ceremony and have it documented, um, you don't wanna be doing that with plastic utensils because you forgot about the fact that you need something to cut the cake with. So add that to your list of things to make sure you don't forget. While cake cutting is a very traditional ceremony to have at your wedding, if that is not your style, if you guys don't like cake, if you don't want to do the cake cutting ceremony, you don't have to. And your desserts are just another way to further personalize and customize your wedding day to really speak to who you guys are as a couple, what you enjoy, and how you want to best entertain and serve your guests. Options are pretty limitless when it comes to wedding desserts, whether you choose to have a traditional wedding cake or a variety of wedding desserts. Hopefully these tips will help you have the wedding dessert that you desire. And hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please subscribe to get weekly videos on wedding planning tips and advice, and we will see you.